Priya Chopra founded One Milk, Two Sugars, a public relations firm when she was only 22 years old. Today on Biz One on One, she's going to tell us about her experience starting a company that young and how she grew, evolved, and adapted to create a company that's now making a major impact on the market and poised for even more expansion. We're going to talk about how social media and how the internet has changed how brands interact with the public. And Priya is going to share with us her two keys to sustain growth in a business. Welcome to Biz One on One, Priya. I'm so excited to meet you. Thank you There's for having me. There's got to be a story behind that name. Everyone asked that question even 12 years later, this name. Um, so the name started because we were three partners, uh, milk and two sugars. The milk was the male, the two sugars ah. were the female. We just thought it was a fun, playful name and it stuck. Um, people would always comment and it would actually get us new biz because they'd be like, and looking on their caller ID and what's this company? Let me pick it up. Who's this calling me? So uh, now the name has evolved. We have a philosophy behind the name and just like how you take your coffee, how do you take your coffee? I take it black. You take it black. So however you take your coffee, I'm, I'm a double-double person, um, but just like how customized it is to take your coffee or your tea, uh, such is our uh, approach uh, to our service offer. So it's never cookie cutter. It's personalized. It's customized, just like uh, your cup of joe. And that is one milk, two sugars is just, I mean, obviously it's a great name because mm -hmm. you can't, it catches your attention. When you started the company, it was much different than what it is today. Yes. Yeah, this company, uh, I started, as you said, quite young. So I consider it to have two chapters, the first half and the second half um, of this story, if you will. So the first six years of the company, um, because I started young, I was sort of just figuring things out, just doing one day at a time and actually thinking it wouldn't even last if that's it's possible. It's funny about that, isn't it? Because yeah. we think, oh, it's all about goal setting and whatnot. And so many companies just sort of stumble into greatness. One thing leads to the other. You have to be extremely focused and committed and determined and it's not easy. So that's why you also think it may not last because there's other options available to you as well. So. I'm really happy it, it sustained and it's and we're, we're still kicking around and doing our thing but the first half was a communications company so basically um, full service communications house anything from graphics to printing to design to PR to events so really saying yes 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 we can do this and yes we can wow, do that. Wow total jack of all trades. Jack of all trades master of none that expression so Sort of a revelation happened. Um, a lot of things, personally, professionally, uh, came together for me around 2009. And there was a big recession happening in Canada at that time, too. Oh, and I never heard about that. Yeah, yeah. I remember that day. Those oh, maybe are... that's selective. <laughs> the selective remembering. That's not it. remembering. So during this whole um, era, I decided to just kind of go my own route, uh, take what I was always delivering to the business, which was media relations, um, doing my, what was my passion, um, and starting saying no to certain business and just being true to what I wanted to do to really go niche on our offer. Um, and that ended up being uh, a really good move. And uh, the milk and one of the sugars uh, moved So my on? brother is the milk. Okay. Um, so he's still obviously part of my family. <laughs> um, I see him every day. We're very close. And he still has one milk, two sugars as one of his businesses, but he focuses on print brokerage. So he's okay. a printing broker. And One Milk, Two Sugars Graphics or Communications uh, is a business partner of mine. Uh, well, my, one of my business partners that we started with, but now she moved to England. She has a restaurant business, very successfully running wow. you know, a few locations. So she's also in her part two of her career. Um, and your company's based in Montreal. I'm from Montreal, Montreal. I'm a native Montrealer, born and raised, love Montreal. Uh, but I opened an office in Toronto as well. Okay. So, so we have two locations now. So now, so you decide to focus more on what you're calling, not just sort of anything to do with communications, but PR. Exactly. What is PR? What was PR then and what is PR today? I've lived this era of evolution with media relations and media in general. I mean, mm -hmm. you being in the media world, you know exactly where I'm coming from. I work with people like you every day. So we're living this together. It's this big shift in how consumers are receiving their information. Um, to give you an idea, I was at the airport today coming in here and I saw this scrolling digital ad that was, you know, an airport banner basically. 
but everyone's on their phone. And I said, look at these beautiful ads that these companies have invested so much money, time, thought in, and maybe you'll catch a glimpse, you'll look up for a second, but you go back to your mobile. So wow. it's just changing the way that we receive information. So now with the movement towards everything digital and online, that's where marketers, that's where brands wanna be. Uh, whereas when I started, it was all about the glossy magazines and the publications that were, you know, all value and prestige was all held in print. But print is changing and um, we're well, living Well, print it. is disappearing. Well, that's it. It, that's it really it. is. Mm -hmm. and. I, I'm not quite sure that most uh, companies mm -hmm. have really realized, they hear about quote unquote social media. Yes. But it, it, what is social media first of all? Yes. But it's really all about this amazing shift over just the last few years mm -hmm. to that mobile device. Mm -hmm. I mean, at the airport, everybody's on it. Yeah. Every kid is on it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's so pervasive now. Yeah. So how do you get, how do you get your clients in mm -hmm. front of their audience mm -hmm. um, creatively through mobile devices. So we were lucky because in, I think we started offering social media in 2010 or 11. Wow. And just by chance, so it was one of my employees was a blogger. Uh, her name was Trish. If she's watching this, maybe she'll remember this moment in our office. She said, Priya, you know, I have a blog. You know, why don't we start offering social media? And even though there might have been five years of a gap in age between me and her, to me that was not my thing. I said, well, okay, I'm the PR expert. If you would like to lead it, please, by all means, help me wow. out. And she launched it for me. And honestly, I'm so happy we got our foot in the door that early because we were able to launch some really interesting digital programs. We actually won an award for a program that we launched in 2012 with influencers. And now the whole notion of influencer marketing is huge. But we were doing that many years ago just by chance. So um, Because you were open to another maybe 20, 22-year-old in a lot of cases today, it's like 16, 17 yes. year olds. You're young. Mm -hmm. I'm six. <laughs> I'm 60. Okay, but you're still very young. Right. And yet, I know you talk about social media as if it's something that you're not that familiar with. That's incredible to well, me. Well, I still do count on these younger talent. I recruit savvy talent that know what they're doing. I was on my way here, and to be honest, I've never done an Instagram story. Do you know what an Instagram story is? No. So, listen, I know what it is. Of course, we offer it as a tool in our promotions. An Instagram story. Instagram, Instagram. to me is like, a, it's, it's like Twitter or Facebook, but it's driven know. by a picture. Exactly. Okay. It's very beautiful. You know, it's all about the aesthetic, photography. Um, it's the latest platform that all brands want to be focusing on. And then they launched a live component. So you can capture where you are, what you're doing live. It lives for a certain amount of time online and it disappears. But today I did my own Instagram story for the first time, but still I'm learning. But my team that I recruit are so savvy. And I think brands are also like going back to what you're saying they are starting to wake up and recognize the value of social media, knowing that they have to place budget behind it. And that shift of thought is so new. I can tell you it's probably been a year and a half in Canada, maybe two years in Canada, and in the States, a little longer for sure they've been in this movement. But the last year and a half has completely changed um, my business model. So um, we're sort of flipping, you know, where Well, when our... you say put budget behind it, mm -hmm. the challenge is that the people deploying the marketing money are they yes. only know what they know yes and they've been trained a certain way and um, I still am surprised when I see full page ads in in national newspapers mm -hmm. because I wonder what are they paying for that and mm -hmm. who is is anybody any younger than me actually opening a newspaper anymore well I think there's value in having an integrated communications plan. So something that we do a lot of is we work with uh, multiple agencies to deliver an amazing campaign. So I still think there is value in having integrated communications, whether it's advertising, whether it's you know with broadcast, whether it's web, SEO, I think all of that coming together is the ideal mix for any brand. Of course, budget doesn't allow you to do everything. Um, but I do think that marketers uh, have been researching social media, getting more informed. The ones that are making these decisions are taking the opinion of people that are younger, starting to really listen and you know, get in the game, basically. Who are your clients now, and again, compared to, say, 2009? Who are they? So we have some really nice brands. Um, we've 
finally, you know, I started the business doing cold calls. So really just knocking on people's door, listen to who we are and what we're doing because, you know, you start from scratch, you gotta start somewhere. But now it's- Calling who? Like, tell me about some so of your focus, early cold calls and you're saying... Um, local businesses, let's say. So, okay. you know, I started in Montreal. We started in my friend's bedroom, you know, so we evolved to an office space about six months later. So it's really focusing on the local business market in Montreal. So just, you know, it could be an odd business owner, a lot of entrepreneurs, could be a dental office, could be a cafe. We were just working with local... And what were you saying to them? Well, I could give you my, if I remember what my sales pitch was, but no, I remember one time doing such a good sales pitch that the business owner that I got on the phone ended up being, you know, having multiple businesses. And he called me in his office, he invited me for a meeting. He called me in his office and I still remember it was such a pat on my back and reassurance that, okay, I can, I'm doing something right here. He said, can you repeat what you said to me on the phone for my son? Because his son was sitting there and he wanted him to, to learn how to cold call and how to pitch. And he said, oh, you did, wow. he said, you did a beautiful pitch. And I said, okay, well, I guess, <laughs> I guess I'm a salesperson now. So anyway, <laughs> listen, when you have your own business, you do it all. Of so course. Today though, we are getting calls from, you know, we work with Nivea, the Beiersdorf Group is a German company that we've been working with now. We just won the bid last year, so we manage all of their portfolio. We have a great relationship with L'Oreal. Um, when you say we manage all their portfolio, all what are you managing? So basically, they have multiple brands uh, in beauty and skincare, and we're the PR and social media agency for okay. all of their brands. So there's the marketing, there's the advertising, there's the PR, but now you're saying PR and social media. Those are the those two Those are facets. your emerging, yes. that's what you're, that's your that's, specialty. That's our wheelhouse. How many other companies, are there big companies that are focusing in on just, they, they're moving more and more into the social media and providing that service? There are, for sure. Um, I think there's some that are doing it right and, you know, some that are catching on and some, of course, you know, are in the game just for social or maybe just for PR and adding social. Um, we are been scouted lately more and more for our digital programs. I think they're getting more sophisticated. We've had the opportunity to execute some really good um, programs that have lent to great case studies and key learnings for other companies. So yeah, I mean, really it runs the gamut, but there are, there's a lot of competition out there. I mean, for sure you have to be aware of it, so. And so how would you sum it up in a nutshell? It's about communicating a message um, for a brand mm -hmm. uh, to grow, to you know, achieve their objectives, mm -hmm. and it's using the latest, you know, coolest, the, the stuff that the 15 year olds and the 12 year olds are all hot and bothered about well, to do it. Well, that's it. There's a, everyone wants to market to the millennial now, um, and there's a way to speak to them. Uh, not only the vehicle that you're choosing in which to speak to them, but how you choose to speak to them. And that's sort of the PR side. So there's this really interesting merger between um, social media and PR. Our teams work really holistically together. So all about dealing with influencers and how to speak to these people that have a voice online all of a sudden, because you could be an influencer in your own right, so could I. So in PR, it's all about managing a relationship. So in terms of our team on the PR side, they get involved uh, working with an influencer, handling that contract, you know, negotiating what's the story gonna be about, what are the key talking points. And then our social media team who are savvy on, you know, how to run this program online on the social media platforms, then they take over that program. So it's sort of the way that we've been executing um, all of our campaigns and it's been working really well. And that's become your specialty, your niche. Our little what niche. Is, yeah. What's on the horizon for you and your company? Lots going on. Um, I guess we've been growing uh, pretty quickly the last few years. I would say the last three years we've been growing quite exponentially. I'm looking to grow in the U.S. so um, really focusing on just kind of cracking that market. So whether it be by joint venture to start, partnerships, um, and then going direct. I mean, I'm usually a direct kind of person, but the US is a bigger, <laughs> a big deal. So I think that uh, we'll probably do it slow and steady, just like we, you know, I've been doing that for 12 years. It's, you know, slow so and steady. Dominating Canada, now looking south. Will you yeah. be making any cold calls into the U.S.? <laughs> well, listen, I think I figured out how to do things along the way. So, you know, as, as you get older, you gain, you know, a network and, uh, you know, people also start coming to you for opportunities. Uh, so that kind of helps, you know. So it's different when you start your business in your 20s, when you're expanding in your 30s or 40s or beyond. Uh, it's a little bit different. So you've been uh, growing your business and you're now at a point where you're, talk, you're talking about taking it to the next level. Mm -hmm. What would be your advice, your 
best two tips, we promised this, your best two tips on growing and sustaining a business? I think for a lot of entrepreneurs, um, it's hard to delegate tasks. They want to Yikes. take ownership of everything A to Z. And I was one of those people. Um, but when I had children, I couldn't stay awake at night. So by default, I wasn't able to do the hours that I was once putting in. So by virtue of that, just naturally, I started to train a team. Um, and this team uh, over time was you know, the first point of contact for clients. And of course I was always there and I was in the background, sort of like a producer. Um, but I think a key part of growth for any business is to recruit solid talent to be able to grow the business. Sometimes you have to invest and you may not have the business right away, but it will come. Uh, your team will be able to take on certain tasks. It will alleviate you from doing the day-to-day. -day. You can think big picture. It's been a real big formula of success uh, for my business and I really encourage other people to think about that. So the key to learning how to not be a control freak and, yes. uh, and uh, <laughs> bring on the best people exactly. is have some children. <laughs> That's the solution. If you can, <laughs> yeah. Open, yes. That's so cool though. Inadvertently, like, that's yeah. kind of what happened. So it was You the were best forced of both. into it. I was forced into it. So it was the best of both worlds. That's fantastic. Yeah. So and how old are your kids, kids now? One, four, and six. Wow. Yeah, so so this is a recent development. It is. It is. <laughs> well, it's been six years of sort of delegating, 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 but to get um, ready for it. Good to get ready for, for you. It. But when, you know, when my daughter, you know, was born, my business was just taking off and I was conducting interviews. She was sitting on my lap and, you know, now it's different scale of things, but you got to do what you got to do. So what about that? We'll just touch on that for a moment. Uh, about women mm -hmm. in business, mm -hmm. both as employees and entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. you know, it, there's obviously special challenges for women. Yes, and of but what about having a having a family, having kids, yeah. and and on both sides, both as the entrepreneur and as the employee. Mm -hmm. I think it's a different reality for women. I think that because women at some point will be having bearing children, taking time off work, trying to get back into the game it's difficult for them and they question whether they should and you know should I have another child or should I have a child or and I get this comment all the time that uh, especially in, in my field where there's a lot of evening there's a lot of events um, it's a really busy hectic schedule with travel they say how do you do it and I said you just stop thinking about it don't overanalyze so um, I think it's important to be supportive to speak about these things uh, in my workplace I fully support I have women that have kids I have some of my team that go on that leave and come back so I'm very very supportive if it's five o'clock and they have to leave you know they're gonna you know, kind of clock in at night and f put in finish what they got to do albeit I'm totally fine with that I offer them flexibility freedom I think it's really important for a woman to be able to know that she can have both things um, a family a business and whether you're working as an employee or running your own business we do have a different reality and it's important to speak about it so I think that even with clients sometimes if they ask me for a meeting at 7 30 I said that is prime time in my house trying to get my kids out the door i'm sorry i can't meet you at that time i will say it i don't hide behind the fact that oh i'm not available no i have kids i'm not available at that time um, so i think it's important to just encourage women to uh, speak about that to know that there are women out there that have children and you know are still doing their thing so that's tip number one mm -hmm. what's tip number two for sustaining a business Tip number two um, is about cash flow and having access to capital. I think that this is so important. If you really want to escalate the pace in which you want to grow your business, first of all, you have to be able to manage your cash flow, to be able to obviously manage all your HR costs, all your operational costs, be able to run your business successfully, um, and also wait to be able to receive payment. I think having a good cash flow is so important. Um, and then just if you want to grow, you need an injection of capital. Uh, it's something that opened my eyes because I started my business with zero loan. <laughs> so it's a shift in thought for me. And it's been something that uh, I've been educating myself about. And, you know, other firms are also um, educating me about it. And I think that it's opened my eyes to the possibilities. And 
not thinking it might take me another 10 years to open that New York office. Um, so I think that access to capital is key and exploring your options, even if you're not there yet, just kind of planting the seed in your mind of uh, the possibilities of what that could do for your business. Um, I think that that's a great, uh, a great thing to think about. Super fun, and you seem to be all lit up about what you're doing, and uh, I congratulate you, and thank you so much thank for joining you. us on uh, Biz 101. Thank Priya you. Chopra, congratulations. Thanks so much. Great to meet you.